opener, the Cowboys went toe-to-toe -to -toe with the reigning Super Bowl champs, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Welcome in to Cowboys Flashback. I'm Danny Sarek. The Cowboys fell 31-29 to the Bucs Thursday night. Of our Cowboys fans should feel confident in what they saw from quarterback Dak Prescott in his first game since that gruesome season-ending right ankle injury in week five last season. Prescott threw for 400 yards and three touchdowns with no sign of any struggle coming off that right ankle injury or the right shoulder strain, which kept him out of the preseason. Here's Prescott Thursday night after his first game in 11 months. Uh, we, we fought hard. We fought all the way to there in the end. That's a good football team that we're playing. Um, they, they got us by a field goal right there. We've got to be better situationally um, in the red zone. Um, defense did a great job giving us chances when we uh, didn't convert touchdowns or field goals and getting us the ball right back. Uh, they did an incredible job, and um, we'll get better because of this one. Obviously, it was tough. Um, tough anytime you don't you don't win, as I said, it's the expectations for um, for this team, for myself, and uh, yeah. Came up short. Did you come in knowing you about to throw about 50 times? Did you put any questions the rest about your health? No, I've, I didn't plan on throwing it that many times. And no, I never questioned my health or um, being able to throw it 50 times or um, how I'd feel out there. Um, I know all the work that I've put in um, over the off season, uh, through training camp, just everything uh, that I expected to go out there and be able to uh, leave it all out on the field and do whatever I need to do to help this team or um, uh, uh, give us a fighting chance. You, know, you, you said repeatedly that you were going to be okay, you were fine, you were fine, you were fine. Now you went out and did it. Is there any feeling of more coming? Do you feel any more confident than you've done as opposed to saying? No, I mean, I don't feel like I say things just to say them. So uh, that, that's just a credit to all the work that I put in. Uh, I think when you invest that much um, work and rehab and prehab and just everything that has gone into the last 11 months for me to get back onto the field. Um, you're not surprised about um, the way that I went out there and, and as I said, faults ran the ball a couple of times and did things that um, I normally do 11 months ago. So um, no, I feel like I'm a better player than I was when I left the field. And I told you all that was the expe expectations I had for myself and I'll continue to try to get better uh, game in and game out. Can talk to you about yeah, I mean, I think I got hit, what, the first drive or so. Um, getting hit as I was made a pass, and after that, uh, yeah, it was a wrap. I mean, I didn't, as I said, it was one of those things I wasn't going to think about anticipating that, mo that first hit or that moment, but once I did, um, I knew I was fine, and it felt good to run it a couple of times and obviously get down and uh, just know that, yeah, I'm, I'm fully healthy, and as I said, I'm the player that I expected to be. Mike has a different offensive philosophy than Jason did in my play for him. You were one first team early in your career. Now you're habitually throwing it 50 times a game. Can you win? I mean, we had a chance to win that game right there. Um, obviously, you want to run the ball more. You want to be balanced. Um, but... The air, the pass was working for us, um, and so that's just the way that the game played out. And we've got the the talent on offense and the talent on uh, around the board to be able to do that. Uh, so we're going to come in each and every game with a plan to be balanced. And if we have to get heavy one way or another, I'm sure we will. I'm sure, there will be games that we we run we run the ball a lot more than uh, tonight, or we plan to. Prescott is so confident in how this Cowboys team will perform this year that after the game went up to quarterback Tom Brady at midfield and said, "We'll see y'all again." This Cowboys team has one of the most prolific wide receivers core in the league. How well did the three-headed monster perform in their season opener? We'll discuss next. Dallas Cowboys flashback presented by Reliant is brought to you by AT&T. Choose VA. Veterans get the benefits you've earned. Visit choose.va.gov. And by Reliant, an NRG company. This segment is brought to you by AT&T. Third and four at the Tampa 21. Wilson in motion. 
Back goes Prescott. Deep ball down the right side. He's got Cooper on the right side of the end zone. Comes up with the ball and the touchdown. And he is shaken up. What a route. What a route Amari Cooper ran. Holy cow. The Cowboys have one of the most formidable trios of wide receivers in the league in Amari Cooper, CeeDee Lamb, and Michael Gallup. Gallup left Thursday's game early with a left calf injury, which is expected to sideline him for several weeks. Cooper and Lamb had no problem carrying the torch. The two of them combined for the team's three touchdowns, as well as more than half of the 400 passing yards. Cooper says there's still plenty to work on because anytime you lose, there's always something to improve on. Um, anytime you lose, there's something to, work, to be worked on. So just got to get back to the drawing board. You know, like Coach said in, in the post game, um, the only thing we know after this game is we ain't going undefeated, you know. But, um, you know, it, was some, it, it wasn't all bad. You know, we did some good things too, so. Can you talk about what that did first game out? You guys rolled and rolled and rolled and sometimes? Yeah, I mean, he did the same thing he was doing last year. Uh, you know, dicing, dicing them up. Um, yeah, I mean, we, we, yeah, as you can see, we got a high-powered offense, but a high-powered offense doesn't guarantee wins, as you can see. So, uh, still got a lot to clean up. <laughs> I'm not surprised. No, no, no. Um, I think we're capable of throwing a lot and being successful. Um, I think we're capable of running a lot and being successful. Um, but the most important thing is the win, and we and we just didn't get that tonight. So. Again, I feel like I could have cleaned some stuff up. Um, you know, obviously I had a, a, a lot of catches, but I always focus on the ones that I that didn't go my way um, that could have helped the team. And um, you know, there was some some big plays that I left out there, some important plays that I left out there that I need to clean up. Uh, personally, I feel like it's it's very disappointing, especially on my end. Considering I know I feel like I played a part in us just continuing being down by the drops that I've had. But uh, you know, you live and you learn, and uh, I'm definitely gonna learn from this and uh, just try to be better for the team. Didn't you attribute some of those drops to anything, or were you nervous? Were you jacked up? Were you not at all. No, nah, it was just me dropping the ball. It's uh, not really much of an excuse for it. It just you know it happens. Was there one that kind of stands out more than? Nah, not at all. They all kind of on the same level. Uh, I'm going to set it all three, four, how many ever it was. Um, how about the offense in general? You guys are you pride yourself on having a lot of weapons and, and spread it around. And, uh, you know, I mean, tonight, you know, you guys had a hundred yards, but it was a huge today for Amari. Is that kind of the offense you guys want to be? That's kind of, yeah, that's kind of uh, the blueprint we put down. Um, all guys, you know, just clicking. Dak is just feeding us all, and uh, he's hot. And uh, that's kind of how we, you know, approached this game. Uh, I feel like today it was kind of a, it was a great step. Uh, obviously, it didn't go the way that we wanted, but I feel like we go we're gonna go back to the drum board here tomorrow, and um, you know, correct those mistakes. Does, does Dak surprise you at all the way he plays, the way he comes back all off season, hasn't really played a whole lot, and he yeah. comes in and just. Not at all. I've been with him the whole way, the whole ride, so I'm rocking with Paul. No surprise from Lamb that Dak Prescott showed out in his first game in almost a year coming off that right ankle injury and after missing every preseason game with a right shoulder strain. It was an explosive outing for the Cowboys offense in their season opener, but what changes did we see from this defense coming off a historically bad year? We'll answer that right after this. This segment was brought to you by AT&T. This segment is brought to you by Ashley Home Store, the official furniture store of the Dallas Cowboys. First and 10 from the 21. They're going to run Jones on the right side. Not very far. Oh, the ball might be out. Hold on a minute. Big scramble. Who's got the ball? Randy Gregory came away with the ball. It's Dallas on a fumble. That's the kind of play that'll turn that stuff around. How about that? 
Welcome back in to Cowboys Flashback. The Cowboys defense knew it would be no easy feat going up against one of the greatest quarterbacks of all time in Tom Brady Thursday night, who's one of just all 22 starters the Bucks brought back this year from their Super Bowl team last season. The Cowboys defense is coming off a historically bad year where they gave up a franchise high 473 points allowed and finished with the second worst run defense in the league. A new defense under new defensive coordinator Dan Quinn, and they held their own this week. The Cowboys had four turnovers and allowed an average of 3.7 yards per carry, which is quite the improvement from the 4.9 Dallas averaged last season. Rookie linebacker and 12th overall draft pick Micah Parsons got his first career start. A new better to start off his career than going against Tom Brady. Yeah, you. Um, I think you learn what separates good quarterbacks from good and great. Um, I think some of the decision makings, how good he was at getting the ball off, um, uh, seeing the coverages we were in, I just felt like he, you could tell he's been in the league for 22 years, I'll say that. How would you your session play if you have the impact you want to have? Um, you, know, you know, football is crazy because like, it's really just situational. You know what I mean? I wish. I could have done more, but some of the situations we was in, whether it's us being backed up or us starting on the wrong side of the field position, um, can't do much, and you kind of limited. Uh, and you know, when a team got that many weapons and you're in a certain field position, you got to call, call certain calls. So um, I, I think I wanted to do more, but um, very limited day. Uh, the speed itself, man. I don't really, I don't really have a trouble reading, reacting. It's just more of what we in and how we can adjust to what they're in. Um, I say I'm pretty fast, and I have a good understanding of what's going on. It's just you just gotta play better. This is the first bowl game that you played in since I believe the Pac-12. Uh, did, it, did it feel different at all? Uh, you know, were you more tired in the fourth quarter? Just kind of. Pulling? Not tired. Uh, we just got to get off the field. When we got them, we got to get off the field. That's all it is. Uh, no excuses. Excuses for the week. We got to get off the field and we got to end the game. Simple as that. We just got to cut down on the, the explosive plays. And, you know, you go out, go out there two minutes left, you got to go out there and get a sack on them. You know, I can't let them pick us apart like he did. So, Four, four turnovers on him. You would have said that going into the game. Would you yeah. thought that would have been enough? You would think, but you know, uh, that's why they call him the goat. You know, he uh, he makes stuff happen. So I appreciate it. Yeah, we are gonna build from there. We had their ass. You know that. Yeah, we had their ass. They know that. Talk about the building. Like you said, you can build on it. Hey, this isn't. You're not gonna be a moral victory guy. What, what, no. How do you build on it? And how do you say, hey, let's, let's do something? Good. No, we 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 fully expected to win this game coming in here. Um, you know, like I said, there's a few things go differently. We win that game, um, but. You know, like we said in the locker room, that's defending champs. Is that the guy? Is that, is that the team that they really believe is going to win another Super Bowl? Then we're right up there with them, and um, you know we believe that. So just got to build on it, come back, get better. There's some things we're going to fix, and you know we'll be good uh, come week two. Defensive end Randy Gregory was one of the team's three captains. Got a start and recovered a fumble. However, the Cowboys were unable to capitalize on all of their turnovers Thursday night. Right after this, we talk about how the special team's mistakes cost Dallas the game. Stay with us. This segment was brought to you by Ashley Home Store, the official furniture store of the Dallas Cowboys. try for Zerline his first field goal of the year from the right hash the kick missed wide left kicker Greg Zerline is coming off back surgery which kept him out of training camp in the preseason and Thursday night's game it was the final two minutes and Zerline made a 48 yard field goal to put the Cowboys up by one however it wasn't enough to make up for the missed opportunities earlier in the game Zerline finished two of three in field goals and missed an extra point. He was the first to hold himself accountable after Thursday's 31-29 loss to the Bucks. Obviously missing something such an easy kick, you don't even really practice them. It's just automatic. Um, and so when you miss something like that, you analyze it for about two minutes, figure out what you did wrong, and then you got to move on. Uh, it doesn't do you no good dwelling on it. 
did you put your finger on it? I mean, could you kind of tell what happened on that one, or is it something you'd rather keep? Um, well, I'll have to go back and watch the film. I know what I think I did, um, but until I go actually watch the film, I just make that adjustment uh, after that kick and go from there. But uh, to actually get down to the nuts and bolts, I won't know until I go watch the film. So you had that and the, the missed extra point. When you got the, the, the third kick, when you made that one, I mean, is it human nature to have a little bit more confidence? All right, you know, I'm, I'm, uh, things are good, or did it ever waver at all? Um, I think the approach is always the same, whether you make it or miss it. Um, you don't just throw things straight out the window. You know, you figure out what you did wrong, and you can make a slight tweak, but you're not going to wholesale change everything. And so um, you just got to keep swinging, really. That's that's all it is, just be confident and swing. Were some of those um, kickoffs, uh, was that like a design kickoff to like have, you know, pooch it up to try to pin them down there? I mean, because yep. we yep. see you bang it through the back of the end zone, but some of the times it's a – Design call. Yeah, yeah, it just depends on what we're feeling at the moment, what the momentum of the game is. Um, so many times you'll you'll see teams kick it short, kind of like we did tonight, and you, you're trying to strip the ball and make a big play for the team. And so uh, on some of those calls, that's what it was. And sometimes uh, the other team doesn't want to play and they'll knee it. And so it just it's a, I guess, game by game, kick by kick basis. I know you're not going to give excuses, but did you feel any rust at all? I mean, you hadn't kicked a lot in the off season. It was would you pinpoint some of that? Would you like you know get the timing back down, or was did you feel 100 percent ready? Yeah, like you said, no excuses. Okay. I mean, if I'm out there, I should make make the kicks, and so there's no excuses. Overall, with this team, um, you know, winning is the ultimate goal. But is there some some good you can take from a game like this that this team can take and say, hey, let's let's build off of this one? Yeah, I think there's a lot of good that can be taken from this. I think we played. I mean, I know we played well enough to win. If I do my job, we win that game. Um, so I feel bad for the guys in there that played their ass off, and I didn't hold up my end of the deal. And so uh, with the team that's that good, returning every player from the Super Bowl victory, uh, we're right there. We're right there, and I just have to do my job. The Cowboys will be without starting right tackle Lyle Collins for the next five games due to a suspension. Head coach Mike McCarthy shares his contingency plan for the offensive line right after this. Dallas Cowboys flashback presented by Reliant was brought to you by AT&T, Reliant, an NRG company, and by NFL Game Pass. You'll never miss a game again. Enjoy full and condensed game replays from week one to the Super Bowl. The Cowboys will be without starting right tackle Lyle Collins for the next five games. He's been suspended after violating the NFL's policy on substances of abuse. Thursday night was Collins' first game since 2019 after missing all of 2020 with a hip injury. The Cowboys will have to move down the depth chart on the offensive line until Collins is eligible to return Monday, October 18th after the Week 6 game against the New England Patriots. Moving down that depth chart is something the Cowboys are quite familiar with, though, after all the injuries they suffered last year. Well, I mean, I mean just, you know, we're, we're, we're not there yet, so until, you know, things... Um, until there's clarity, uh, but you know we've been working. You know all those guys, the different combinations. Uh, it'd be good to get Zach back, um, but you know we have time. I mean, obviously playing on Thursday night gives us some time where the players are off, uh, mandatory three days off. Uh, so we'll bring the players in on Monday. We'll spend the morning working on Tampa, and then we'll spend the the afternoon working on the Chargers. With uh, Collins, was the situation you something? This could be coming. This is, it didn't catch the organization off guard today, so, you know. Uh, n nothing um, of surprise. It's just, it just, you know, once again, it's just the timing of it. It's, it's a bit awkward, but um, it's just something I can't speak on right now. Uh, you, you'll discuss all the options in the line, especially when you're looking at a defined time frame of five weeks. You, last week, you mentioned Zach Martin's only a breaking case of emergency. Since you actually have a defined time frame here, is that a little different than discussion and just working a guy in at that position week after week? I'm not sure I follow you. You're talking about Zach yeah. as far as coming back and as far as, yeah. Zach, as far as swinging out to a right tackle. I mean, unfortunately, we, yeah, unfortunately, we got a lot of experience from last year moving people around. So, uh, but you know, we'd, we'd like to you know keep moving forward uh, with you know with guys that have been working the right tackle. You know, obviously, LC, Ty, and Terrence have, have taken the reps there. So, um, you know, having having eight 
offensive linemen at different you know combinations. You know, frankly, coming out of the game, you know, just coming out of the grading sessions, sessions you know, Connor McGovern played very well. So I mean, it's you know, we're we're, we're eyes wide open, uh, but. Uh, you have to be because uh, things happen, you know. Um, so we want to be able to have as many combinations as possible. Can you talk a little bit about Nasecki and Steele, the, the sort of uh, training camps they had for you and, and where they are relative as far as that competition? Yeah, and, uh, both Ty and Terrence have, have, have worked both left and right tackles. So, um, you know, I, I feel very comfortable with, with playing with those guys. So, you know, Ty's got a ton of experience and, you know, Terrence was you know clearly one of our most improved first year players uh, going into second year, and you know you look at all the the experience he had last year. So uh, I feel I feel good about those guys. The Cowboys will head west for their second consecutive road game against the Los Angeles Chargers September 19th. Be sure to stay locked in on DallasCowboys.com to stay up to date on all team news and updates. Until then, thanks so much for watching Cowboys Flashback. I'm Danny Sarak. It's been a pleasure.